Okay, and welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Uh, proud to be here with you, hanging out with you here in our very special broadcast, uh, Third Time's the Charm, and very happy to be here. Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, <clears throat> here with you every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time dur during our normal scheduled broadcast on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT, Wake Up Call DT.com as well as on Facebook.com backslash Wake Up Call DT, YouTube.com backslash Wake Up Call DT, and where you are right now on Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT. So however you tune in every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time worldwide, we appreciate you being a part of the show from the Central New York community, up and down the East Coast, the Midwest, the West Coast, and around the world. So many thanks to each and every single one of you for being a part of the show and sharing it with your family and friends, coworkers, colleagues, and neighbors. Appreciate you so very much for that. So we got a lot of great stuff coming up here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. And we've been able to do specials like I was talking about before, have been uh, able to do so many different specials here on Wake Up Call and to have so many different things going on. From bowl season, predicting all 43 bowl games, 86 teams involved, We've done that, and we have, of course, uh, had Syracuse football alumni on. We've talked about local re local recruiting and the importance of that in central and upstate New York, and so much more, including Syracuse basketball. And, of course, we've been covering the uh, sectional championships and the New York State championships with teams like CBA as well as uh, Shenango Forks and so many other great pieces. CBA, Shenango Forks as well as uh, you know, covering other teams main and well, uh, each of those three that have won state championships in New York State, and of course, CNS and the likes of Beeville and Liverpool and West Jenny, uh, Windsor, Union Endicott, and so on and so forth. So uh, excited for all we get to do. Been very busy, been on Zoom calls all over the country, covering the Cotton Bowl, the Peach Bowl, and, and everything that's going on with these teams, Michigan State, Pittsburgh, Alabama, Cincinnati, covering the American Athletic, and there's six new institutions that are coming in. It's been a very busy time on Wake Up Call, and uh, it only gets busier in, in the best of ways. So excited for what we have coming up. We're looking to uh, have a special here today with someone who's no stranger to the broadcast, and that is Daniel Booby Santiago, who's joining us here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. He came from Utica Proctor in New York, where he was playing high school ball, and went on to the Horizon team down in Arizona to continue his high school career in these last couple seasons because of uh, COVID kind of holding things up in New York State. So we've had the opportunity to see him excel in Horizon, and he started to get offers. Uh, first one coming through, coming from Arizona, and he has, at the time that we're talking right now, over 10 offers, Arizona, Colgate, as well as Holy Cross, New Hampshire, Buffalo, Navy, Army, Air Force, Colorado State, Yale, and San Diego State have all offered Daniel Booby Santiago. So here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, we'll have the opportunity to welcome him in just a little bit here where sports meets life. So I hope you're all doing well, and I hope that you pay attention to all of our upcoming shows. we got a lot of great stuff coming up on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, so many different video and audio specials that you do not want to miss a second of, and uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm honored and I'm privileged, and we got Daniel Booby Santiago going to be coming on with us here right now, so let's bring him on to the broadcast. Like, like I said, third time is a charm as he comes in and will be picture in picture with me. And let's see. Here he is. Hi, Daniel. How are you? What's going on, man? How are you? Man, I'm doing good. I'm happy to have you. Happy to uh, get this going. Like I said, third time's a charm. Just read off your offers. Yale, Air Force, Army, Navy, Colorado State, San Diego State, Buffalo, New, New Hampshire, as well as Holy Cross, Colgate, and Arizona. First and foremost, congratulations. Appreciate it. You know, glad to be here Thanks. again. It's been a while, but, uh, you know, we're back now, so. Yeah, it's definitely been a while since since our opportunity that we had to talk, and 
I'm so happy to have you back here, Daniel. And just what you could tell me about this whole recruiting process and what it's been like for you. Um, you know, like I said, plenty of times, it's really, you know, it's a dream come true. Um, you know, something that I've been wanting to accomplish, something um, that I wanted to go through since, you know, being a little kid, watching football, and, um, you know, seeing everyone around me just talk about football. And, uh, yeah, I'm in the place I wanted to be, um, you know, pretty much my whole life growing up. And, um, you know, it was super exciting. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited for the next part every time. You know, and, and as we get to look at what's coming up for you, you had the opportunity to get back and uh, to play for Horizon once again. Just what you could say about what Horizon's meant to you playing um, these last couple seasons. Oh, man. Uh, Horizon is a uh... – you know, it's huge for me. Uh, it's a big part of, uh, you know, my whole journey and my experience uh, playing football. Um, you know, going out there pretty much, you know, not not knowing much about Arizona football. Um, you know, I doing the research that I could do, um, you know, I, I knew enough to to choose Horizon as, the, uh, you know, the place to be. Um, and, you know, it's been, a, it's been a blast the past two years just playing there and uh, my experiences in Arizona. Bring me into your research and, and finding – Horizon, like you said, not knowing a lot about Arizona high school football. How did you come across Horizon, and how did you get it all to come together? Oh, uh, we got me and my dad, um, obviously, back what was it, two years ago now, um, last, April of 2020. Um, obviously, during the big lockdown, things weren't going too well out here uh, as far as football, you know, especially high school football around here. Um, so I guess we had to relocate and, um, you know, find, find a different place to, uh, you know, earn some opportunities. Um, and so with that being said, we, uh, we reached out to a, a, former, a former high school coach out there um, who coaches JUCO now um, at a community college and um, pretty much just, just got, gave us the rundown of, of the area, um, gave us a list of schools and, um, you know, the things they had to offer, their pros and cons, um, you know, that helped us make a list, make a list. and, um, you know, we went from there. Uh, that list was teams like Pinnacle, teams like Saguaro. Um, Paradise Valley was a school on the list. Obviously, Horizon was a school on the list. And uh, Chaparral was on the list, too. So I think it's like five or six five or six teams to, to choose from. Um, you know, I had, I had a big jump sophomore to junior year. So before I went out there last year, I wasn't, um, I wasn't too – I didn't really know what to expect um, out of myself, personally, as a player. Um, so Horizon was a place where I knew I could, I could get on the field fast. Um, and it wasn't a bad program. You know, obviously, it's a good program. And, um, you know, I, we, we built from last year, uh, new coaching staff this year. And uh, you know, now we're here, uh, state champions. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't regret. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Daniel, you going to Horizon and having that opportunity, you know, like you said, uh, you went down there, and now you, you leave Utica Proctor, so you're not only leaving a coaching staff, you're leaving a school, you're leaving a state, you come down to Arizona, and then you have to go through a new coaching staff. You've gone through so much change. You've essentially kind of been learning what it's like to be an NFL player, to have different coaches, be in a different state, have a different opportunity, a different look, uh, wearing a different jersey. Just what you could say that's done for you as, as a teenager to know what it's like to leave a state leave a coaching or have a new coaching staff come in and, and be at a new school? I mean, you know, in the beginning it wasn't easy, you know, it definitely wasn't easy. You know, I left my family here. I'm out there, um, you know, living with my uncle. Um, you know, it was tough for the first time, you know, ever really being away from my parents for so long. But um, I knew I knew what I wanted. I knew what I was chasing and I knew my goals. And, um, you know, eventually uh, I knew that it will pay off um, just as much as I wanted it to pay off. Um, so, you know, like I said, I had the opportunity to go out there and uh, kind of chase my dreams, and that's what I did. Speaking with 2022 defensive tackle nose guard, uh, Daniel Booby Santiago. Daniel, uh, being a Central New York native, I, I talk about this a lot on my show, that, you know, recruiting Central New York, upstate New York in general is important. I want to get rid of the moniker, that this, this crazy uh, belief that there is no talent in the state of New York. Or in, or in Central and Upstate New York specifically, you came from Central and Upstate New York. You went somewhere else down to Arizona, showcased the talent, and won a state championship in a, in a, in a state where obviously there's a lot of talented uh, football, I'm sure. So just bring me into that uh, about getting rid of the nasty rumor and nasty belief that 
there is no talent in New York State because you are part of that Central New York talent, and you obviously have shown that not only is your talent worth having on a team, but it's state championship-worthy talent, and it's talent that teams from all around the country in collegiate football want to have on their team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, always been a Utica kid, always will be a Utica kid, born and raised. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a Proctor. I'm a, I'm a Raider. You know, I'll be a Raider forever. Um, but uh, it, it is definitely under-recruited out here. There's, there's, some, there's some kids out here that definitely deserve a, a bigger opportunity. Um, you know, it's good to see that, you know, some of them are, you know, they're, it's starting to pay off for some kids. Um, you know, like the, the CBA kids and, um, you know, a lot of the recruiting is starting to kick off a little bit more. Um, so I feel like that's super important. Um, so talent-wise, I, d- I definitely think we have talent um, to, to produce a lot more uh, next-level athletes. It's just, you know, the exposure and um, who, who really – who, who, it's like how, how do we get our like how do we get eyes on us um, with with the circumstances we're in and that, I feel like that's you know one of the biggest things um, but talent wise are definitely we have the talent you know well I think you know one of the ways to get eyes on it is what we're doing right now my show is dedicated to helping out players such as yourself student athletes and Rob Drummond who does an incredible job with training student athletes and as a former Syracuse player, Philadelphia Eagle and played in the CFL, won numerous championships and was the last undefeated team at Syracuse in 1987. And one of the only undefeated teams, his team and Ernie Davis's team of 59. So, you know, I think Rob and I can do a lot to get you guys exposure. I think what you've been able to do is has, has helped with that. Uh, you and I started talking, we crossed paths a while back over a year ago. And I talked to you about I believe, you know, I was like, have that belief, have that faith. You know, I'm praying and hoping to God you'll get that offer. And a week after we said that, literally like seven days, you got your first offer. And now, the you know, the the newspapers wanting to talk to you, all these places are coming after you. What can you say about, you know, starting when, you know, when it was you and I talking to where you are now where people are going, hey, look, there's this really talented guy out of Utica. And I'm going, yeah, I knew that a year and a half ago. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um. Like I said, you know, like I say all the time, you know, I really appreciate uh, what you did and the platform you have and the platform you put me on, um, and obviously other kids around here. And um, you know, it, it was one of the first real like interviews I had, um, you know, before all the things started and uh, you know all the you know the offers came and all the opportunities started coming in. Um, I feel like you're one of the the first uh, media guys to really believe in me and um, show any love at all. Um, and now, you know, it's almost a year or. Yeah, almost a year later, and, um, you know, we're still on here and uh, doing what we have to do. You know, and I'm seeing that your body has only gotten bigger. I, I feel that at this point, you know, you're kind of getting to, like, that Hulkamania status, you know. So what can you say about your workout regimen and what you've been able to do from who you were, you know, when we started talking a year or so ago to who you've become now? Because I'm seeing the pictures, I'm watching the stuff out there, and, You've definitely worked on your body consistently to be where you are today. Yeah, so um, I started off, uh, like I said, during the lockdown where I started to um, not take it more seriously, but um, just just mature on the on level of, um, you know, playing football and, um, you know, not – it's kind of taken seriously, but it's something I've always taken seriously. It's just taking that next step to, um, to, be, to help me be where I want to be. Um, obviously, like you said, this year I, I did – um, you know, progress, which is, you know, it's only right. Um, last year we played <clears throat> six games um, for the season in total. This year I played 14, 15 games. Um, so that's huge. That's a, it's a big it's a big jump um, for me to year, um, especially not knowing it, where I would play. I mean, I, I thought 100% I'll be playing here uh, and, and, you know, playing here for practice this season. But um, things started to crumble and, um, you know, I had to – to resort back to, to Horizon where I saw the opportunity to play football. And, um, you know, that, that led me to state championship. And, um, you know, I'm glad I did it. You know, and, and looking at that state championship, just what you could say about the talent that you played in Arizona that you went up against, what that meant for you to win a state title. I mean, you are now being recruited collegiately for 2022 incoming, and you're coming off of a state title in the state of Arizona, just what that means for you and the level of competition you went up against, as well as how that maybe helps your recruiting. 
Um, I mean, it definitely it does help your recruiting, but I don't think it's um, you know 100% the talent I played. Uh, there's definitely football taking a lot more serious out there, like I said. But um, I don't think that's anyone's fault. It's just not a not a normal thing out here, um, and it hasn't been. But um, you know, it, it wasn't like this for Arizona maybe 10 years ago. Um, I know that Arizona's grown as a football state, uh, you know, tons since um, I mean, just just the last probably five, 10 years. Um, so hopefully, you know, upstate New York and New York in general will be there, uh, be there soon. Um, I mean, I see it happening slowly. You know, there's a lot of things coming, a lot more players being exposed um, to uh, to you know have the opportunity to play at the next level. Um, you know, different outlets are coming in. Um, like the uh, prep red zone for me, for New York, it's a new thing. Uh, started by uh, Mr. Travis uh, Travis Tolbert, so he started that, and that's a, that's a big thing because that's a big thing in Arizona uh, prep red zone to where uh, it's a big media outlet to uh, get some players some exposure. And um, I feel like having that here is it's a one big step to uh, you know changing the way football is looked at in the state of New York. And, and for you to be a representation of this once again, uh, Yale, Air Force, Army, Navy, Colorado State. San Diego State, Buffalo, New Hampshire, Holy Cross, Colgate, Arizona. That's your list so far. Uh, just what you could say to me about being a Central and Upstate New York native and pushing the reality against the falsehood that there is talent in the state of New York. I mean, you can only go, you know, as far as you want to go. I mean, you can put in the work or you cannot put in the work. I mean, I put in the work. I knew where I wanted to be since I was – uh, you know, four or five years old, just seeing it happen with my uncles and my family. And uh, I mean, there's football around me. It's always been around me. Um, so, I mean, if you if that's what you want, if football is the way that you want to take, um, take, you, you know, your life to a next level. And, uh, you know, whether that's, you know, brotherhood and, you know, the sport and, uh, you know, college and maybe even professional. Um, if that if that's, you know, the route you want to take to success, then uh, if it, you, you do what you have to do to make it happen. You know, and, and for you to, to do what you've done to make sure that this happens for you. I mean, hindsight 2020 playing in the state of Arizona. Bring me into the – I want to go into the state championship run. It's not even that you played there this year. But, I mean, a new coaching staff, they welcomed you back in. And you, just bring me through the run because, you know, I've gotten to see teams here, uh, Shenango, Forks, Main Endwell, and CBA very closely make a run for – New York State championships in, in their respective classes. Bring me into your championship run with, with Horizon in Arizona. Um, so back in the spring, I went back uh, to actually meet this new coaching staff, to, you know, a total new coaching staff. And, you know, I, I really didn't know what to expect. You know, after meeting Coach Lynn, my head coach, and uh, Coach Wearson, my defensive coordinator, and, and everyone that was on staff, um, I knew that, you know, the team had potential, whether I was here or not. Um, coach Lynn came from Hamilton. Um, Hamilton was a uh, – a nationally ranked team the past, you know, five years probably. Um, so, I mean, he, we knew he was big time. He's a big time coach. And uh, so we knew, we knew we had talent coming in because even the people he would hire, I, I wouldn't expect anything less but great. Um, so with that being said, I mean, they were a huge part. I mean, we weren't the biggest team in the state. Uh, we weren't the fastest. We weren't the strongest. Um, we had heart. And, you know, we had a great coaching staff to uh, help us lead the way and uh, put us in the position, to, you know, to get where we wanted to be which is a state championship. You said, you know, not being necessarily the biggest or the fastest team, but you had the heart to get there. Just bring me into what you thought got you guys over the hump. What was it about this team that just helped you to reach the end and, and get the trophy for not being maybe on paper the team that people expected? How did you get to that championship? I mean, walking into that stadium through the tunnel, I mean, I was sick. I had like a 103 degree fever before the game, state championship game. But um, walking in that stadium, taking a look at the other team, um, I'm not one to get intimidated. Like I don't get intimidated by another team. But just 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 comparing, you know, you know, the quarterback's probably six four, six five. Mine's five ten. Um, you know, they're running back six foot. Mine's five nine. I mean, it, it's not a, it's not. I, I feel like obviously that has nothing to do with um how we're going to perform. Um, I can't really put into words what what it was that made our team. Um, you know, as strong and as a dominant as it was, um, I feel like we had tons of energy. We had, you know, tons of good bonds, uh, lots of time spent together. And um, a, I mean, we came together as an actual team, which is, you know, a group of people working for all, you know, the same goal. And, you know, that's what we wanted. Um, and uh, 
So, I, like I said earlier, if that's what you want, then, you know, you're ready to make it happen. It's time to, you know, put in the work and make it happen. So, Sarah, with Daniel Booby Santiago hanging out on Wake Up Call and a very special broadcast here as we join him on his recruiting trail. Is it safe to say that, you know, that, that what first Wednesday in February that you'll be uh, signing on National Signing Day? Yes, sir. And where are you at as far as recruitment right now? We got 11 schools on the list. Uh, what are your thoughts? What are your feelings? Give me a little update on what's going on. Oh, uh, yeah. So 11 schools on the list right now. Um, you know, schools are coming in. Uh, you know, there's tons of schools there. You know, I'm talking to pretty heavy right now. I'm um, expecting something big from um, so with that being said, you know, my, my recruitment is still 100% open. Um, I am getting closer and um, developing a bigger bond with, with some of the schools that, that you listed um, as far as, you know, making the decision. Uh, top five is coming probably, you know, within within a month, within next month. Um, and I, I'll be committed within next month as well. And by the end of the next month, um, probably, probably by the middle of the next month, I'll be committed, if not sooner. So, um, you know, signing day is when you, you really make it solid. But, uh, uh, my plan is to, uh, you know, have a solid home before before signing day even, you know, comes. So you're looking at having a top five come to us in January and to commit in January ahead of National Signing Day. Yes, sir. Where I know you, the top five isn't fully done yet, but who are the schools that you've built the closest relationships with? Um, I built huge relationships with, uh, you know, the guys at Colgate. Um, you know, they had, they were flying in and out of Arizona the whole season, uh, head coach, D coordinator, D line coach all coming in. So, um, you know, they're super, you know, they show lots of love. Um, same thing with army. Um, I've had, there, you know, other schools come out that I don't have the offers from, um, you know, come out and see me and, um, you know, they like what they see and we're in touch right now. I have schools coming, uh, in January when I get back to come see me and talk and, um, you know, just try to figure something out there. So, um, it's, uh, I mean, oh, so where I get left from. Um, Army shows lots of love. Um, Colgate shows lots of love. Holy Cross shows lots of love. Um, my visits to the other places, they, you know, they all show lots of love. Um, I get mail from, uh, you know, Colorado State, San Diego State. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's not really, there's, there's none really eliminated. Um, yeah, no one eliminated as far as right now. Who has been showing love to you that maybe hasn't offered yet? Maybe some schools you're looking to meet with or talk with or have talked with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Merrimack uh, is, a, is a big one on there. Uh, Lehigh is a big one on there. Actually, UTEP. Um, I posted the, uh, the the top five coming soon thing, and uh, UTEP told me to put them on their top five. So, you know, I'm, I'm probably expecting something big out of there. Um, so there's, this, you, there's a bunch of schools that are uh, – I expect coming in soon and uh, just to help me, you know, expand, you know, expand my opportunities, but narrow them down at the same time and uh, figure out where I want to be. I know we've talked about how Oregon was always a dream school of yours. Has there been any contact with Oregon? Um, small, just little, little contact with Oregon. Um, you know, I'm kind of, I mean, typically undersized. I mean, I know I can play, me personally, I know I can play at any level of football in the country um, when it comes to collegiate level, but, um, Sometimes it's just not what a, what a team's looking for. So it's not – I'm not going to sit there and, and chase uh, chase something that's not there. But, um, you know, when I do get to the next level, you know, it's when I'll – everyone will be proven wrong. You know, size doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be dominant wherever I go. We've talked about this before, but the only team that seems to not recruit Central and Upstate New York is the team in Central and Upstate New York, and that's – Syracuse, Buffalo recruits there, the Big Ten recruits there. Uh, we've seen Rutgers in it, whatever conference they're in has recruited there. UConn's yeah. recruited there. They're now independent. Boston College under Steve Adazio, Colorado State under Steve Adazio. Colorado State uh, has you on there right now after Steve Adazio. So uh, we know that Nick Saban and Alabama have come up there before. Uh, Pittsburgh has Servassier Dennis right now playing in a New Year's Six Bowl game after winning an ACC championship. Stevie Scott went on to create a true freshman running record at Indiana. So the only school that doesn't seem to recruit Central and Upstate New York is Syracuse. Yeah. Thoughts on that, and has there been any contact with Syracuse? Yeah, uh, Syracuse actually came out to Arizona too. Um, 
which is kind of weird to me because when I'm in New York, it seemed to uh, be a little bit more quiet. But, I mean, he said it himself. Uh, Coach Babers, you know, he doesn't really look for talent out here, um, which I don't know what his, perspective, what his perspective and reasoning is on, you know, on that. But, I mean, it, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to chase anything that's not there. Uh, definitely be be iconic, um, you know, to go follow my uncle's uh, footsteps and play um, at his alma mater in Syracuse. But, um, you know, I've been in contact with them, and it just seems that uh, they're, they're looking for something different. So, I mean, it is what it is. What could they be looking for different than a, someone who comes from their home state that has offers and a positive reputation from over 10 schools across the country? I would think that uh, Yale, Air Force, Army, Navy, and so on, Arizona, and so on and so forth, I have built a reputation. So uh, how could you not be what Syracuse is, is looking for when I see so many other schools appreciate what you have? Um, I'm out here, you know, just, you know, throw any hate or any slander. Um, you know, they're literally looking for something specific, specific. And, um, you know, it's definitely a possibility. I just, I'm not what they're looking for. I mean, it, I mean, I've seen, you know, all their D tackles and their whole D line pretty much decommit. Um, you know, they had coming in. So, I mean, Something's not going right over there. And, um, you know, I don't really have the inside scoop to honestly know what's going on, you know, what's going through their heads and, you know, what actually it is they're looking for. Looking at who has looked at you, you have the military, all of them. You have Air Force, Army, and Navy. Uh, what that means to you, we just saw Army come back and defeat Missouri of the SEC in a bowl game. Uh, Air Force currently playing in a bowl game at the time that you and I are talking. Navy yeah. just defeated Army for the second time in the last three years and under Kenny Amatololo, they won eight straights from 2008 to 2015. So just what Army, Navy, and Air Force mean, uh, knowing just how important these schools are, not just for football and being a student, but the fact that, you know, uh, as Kenny Amatololo says at Navy, that we're not looking to, for you to have success the next four years. We're looking for you the next 40 years. So just what would those military schools mean to you? I mean, super deep conversations uh, with them. You know, I, I understand no less than, um, you know, the unlimited opportunities they have, you know, after football and after school um, for for a football player. I mean, there's pros and cons to it, um, which, you know, they're, they're huge. The pros can be huge. Um, the cons can be, uh, you know, kind of a game changer. Um, I mean, I personally – it um, you know, the opportunities definitely are, are huge. I mean, I definitely do not do not underlook the opportunities, and um, you know what it is to to go play for a big prestigious school like Army or like Navy, um, and even Air Force up in Colorado. Um, but uh, it, it is a different a different type of offer and a different type of uh, of life you live, um, you know, while playing and uh, even after graduating from uh, an academy. So, uh, I mean, it's a different opportunity, but nonetheless, it's it's a huge opportunity. And, um, you know, probably the biggest and um, most, uh, you know, reliant opportunity out of, you know, all of them. Why did you not commit, Daniel, uh, in the early signing period, National Signing Day Part 1, so to speak? Why did you not commit on uh, and sign on December 15th? Um, it's – the transfer portal is insane. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. Um, I don't want – I didn't want there to have been opportunities that I missed. Um and I didn't want there to be opportunities that, um, you know, are yet to come that uh, I wouldn't be, you know, available for. Um, so I, I believe that, you know, things are coming. I mean, as you see, I got three, three, two or three offers uh, after that signing day, um, which which are, are definitely big parts of my recruiting. Um, so I personally just, I believe that, um, you know, I, I had a gut feeling that something else was coming. And I, I mean, I still do. Um, you know, before before the the last signing day, so uh, I guess we'll we'll see when that time comes. I mean, I guess what you're essentially saying there's a benefit to waiting because the transfer portal has musical chairs going on, and eventually that music's going to stop. Yeah, coaches have changed all over the country, and we're going through bowl season right now. So you know, essentially for you, by the time that you make a commitment, we'll be past all the coaching vacancies. Hopefully the transfer portal will start to, you know, even out, make some sense here. 
And then, you know, at the same time, bowl season will be over. So uh, you'll be able to kind of see where the chips have fallen uh, from what you're saying. Yeah. So right now there's spots on rosters that coaches and coaching staff have no idea are open um, just because they don't know who's coming and who's going. And I mean, I don't, you know, you, you can't really, you can't really blame them or, or set any, uh, you know, just ir irresponsibility to them for it because, you know, it's not easy to, you know, do their job and, you know, be on top of every single player coming in and out. Um, even from different teams, whether it's in their conference or um, at their level of play, it's there's just there's there's athletes you know coming and going and coaches coming and going everywhere. There's you know the seniors from last year getting another year of eligibility. It's just it, it's kind of a mess, but um, it's uh, I, I know something big is going to come out of it. For you, you have a feeling that something big is coming. Why do you feel like your recruitment's not over yet? Um, I just I believe that. Um, my it's sort of like my uh i feel like there there's always going to be uh you know the best opportunity for you um and with the research i've done and the conversations that i've had um i don't think the absolute best opportunity has come for me uh so far um there's there's great opportunities and opportunities that i wouldn't mind taking um but the, the chance that there is uh, you know a bigger opportunity for me uh coming i thought was high um so uh, I'm, I do feel, and my family does feel, and, uh, you know, coaches and people that uh, I, like know what they're doing and know what they're talking about feel that, uh, you know, something big is happening too. How do you stay top of mind now that your season's over? Uh, how do you stay top of mind with coaches and teams out there? Are you continuing to send your film out to different places? Are you talking with your coaches at Horizon? What are you doing to make sure that you're going to make the most – of this time period between now and when you would like to commit? Uh, biggest thing right now is my dad. My dad's huge on, you know, he's on top of everything. Um, you know, he's watching watching videos and he's on top, he's on the iPad doing this and just coming up with the numbers and sending me this and sending me that and keeping in contact with coaches that we've been in contact with and, um, you know, sending new things like the UTEP thing. I got a message from my dad probably not even less than an hour ago. Um, so, I mean, he's on top of everything and I'm super appreciative of that. Um, you know, it, it leaves me to do, you know, not nothing, nothing more than, you know, I absolutely have to um, yet yeah, still be on top of absolutely every opportunity. Um, even, you know, the D2 schools coming in, the JUCOs and different opportunities like that. Um, he's on top of just keeping a clear mind and uh, staying focused and trying to, you know, make the best of all my opportunities. Yeah, you know, and I'm, listen, I'm ecstatic. The bat signal, I'm hoping, goes up about 23 more times. Before, before you make a commitment here. But, you know, uh, Daniel, it's, it's been extremely important to me for you personally to make sure that I do everything I can to get you out there. You've done the work. You've put in the effort. I could take no credit for anything. I'm just happy that I get to tell your story. I'm thankful that you let me do it. I'm so grateful to look at this list and see all these reputable schools giving you an opportunity. And I know that no matter where you go at this point, there's something positive that can come from having a strong faith, a strong work ethic, and being a good kid. So I, I honestly, above everything else, I'm so happy to know you, know your family, and to know that your hard work has been paying off. It really does mean a lot, and I'm hoping that you can be a beacon of hope for kids in Central and Upstate New York and New York State in general that you can make it from where you come from. And I believe that wholeheartedly so many kids have. And I hope that you're going to be the next in a long line of, of student athletes that can show that Central and Upstate New York is incredibly talented and will do great things in the classroom and on the fields and courts of life as well. Yeah, I mean, what what my you know process has been is obviously no secret, and I, mean, I appreciate what you said um, you know before that. But uh, for the kids that are you know next up, you know, including my little brother, you know, there's no secrets in, in the process we've taken. Um, so if there's any questions and any, any help that, you know, would be needed and um, even just small things like grades and classes you should, shouldn't take and, you know, the, smart, the first steps of, uh, you know, setting up your Twitter or whatever it is, um, you know, uh, we'll be glad to, you know, help out and um, just, just shine the light and um, hopefully get, get New York on top of the country. Um, as far as football goes, like, I, you know, I know it's possible. And tell everybody really quick how they can connect with you and see your film or connect with you on social media. Uh, my Instagram is booby with fives instead of the bees, so five o o five i e. Um, you know my DMs are always open. Um, my Twitter is big dan zero zero two two. Facebook is this obviously. 
um, you can, you know, contact if you, if you know, I mean, we're pretty, we're pretty well known my family. So if you know anyone that knows my family, uh, just reach out and we'll definitely make something happen if there's anything we can do. Uh, coming from Daniel Booby Santiago, 2022 D tackle nose guard coming out of Utica Proctor in New York, Horizon in Arizona, played two seasons at Horizon during COVID times, just won a state championship in Arizona and has plenty of offers and hopefully plenty more offers to come. Daniel, as always, thank you, sir. I'll be looking up at the sky for that bat signal, and I am so incredibly proud of you. The only other thing I got to say is I need I need one of those 55 hats. I know that. Oh, this is a, a hat the seniors got this year from the school. Uh, from the okay. Team. This is uh, H Town on the side. It's a 55 hat. Yeah, but, yeah we're gonna cool. we're gonna have to find a way to replicate those hats. I think. Yeah, yeah, we can make it happen. For sure. <laughs> All right, man. Well, listen, take care of yourself. Be well, and as things come in. I know that you'll let me know. So God bless with everything to you and your family. And I hope that uh, God continues to guide you on the right place and, and finding what's going to be best for you. Yes, sir. I appreciate everything. Thanks for having me. All right, man. Take care. You too.